Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Okay, let's go on now. Um, during these holidays, probably I will have to sit and, and grade your, your, your quits. <laughs> While you are enjoying, I will have to be working. It's not fair, but that's, that's the way it is. I have to live with that. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, now uh, we have worked with uh, systems in which, uh, like this one here, for example, I have one beam and this beam is uh, aligned. Okay, okay. yes, oh, and I'm not projecting. You are not, sure. I'm, I'm not projecting, yes. There, thank you, thank you. Okay, this example that we did in class here, see, there is one single direction. Now, what happens when we have different directions? Okay, and uh, we're going to follow a procedure which is similar to the one that we employed in chapter one. So this is uh, uh, da, 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 this is two point three, I think, right? So we have uh, we're going to deduce the stiffness matrix in the plane. Okay, so this is very similar. We're going to use you'll see in a minute uh, the same transformation matrix that uh, we employed to analyze bars in the plane, okay? Except that now we have to worry about, also we have to worry about the rotation, but it's not that complicated. So, uh, let's write it. In a similar way, as in the case of bars in the plane, okay, we need to specify displacement and forces. When I say displacement, I mean linear and rotational. And when I say forces, I mean forces and moments in a common reference system. That's what we call a global reference system. Then we can set up equilibrium for the whole system. Okay. This process, uh, we're going to present it only for the plane, but you can imagine that we can apply a parallel procedure, a similar procedure as this one, when we have uh, beams, but in the space. In that case, of course, we need uh, more information. We need two angles, okay? Remember when you do AutoCAD, you need uh, to rotate, uh, a body in the in the in the space. You need two angles. I don't know, I don't remember the names of those angles, but that's basically what you need. Uh, in this case, since we are only working in the plane, we need only one angle. Okay, but the procedure is basically the same. You need two angles, so you take a displacements or a vector in the local reference system and convert that into the global reference system. Okay, so everybody, every element 
will be talking the same language. And then we can, as we can set here, you can set up equilibrium. Why? Because when you mean X direction, everybody understands the same. Y direction or rotation. So everybody will understand the same. Okay. Um, and so the procedure is, is going to be how to transform that. And we did that already, okay? So uh, this is the global reference system. And here, let me change color. We can have a local reference system. For example, let's suppose this is for one single element. If you specify a vector, for example, this is a vector D, uh, this is something that we did in the past, uh, in the previous uh, chapter. So I'm not going to repeat it. So we can uh, set that the D in the local, D in the local, in the Y direction, you can transform from the global. Okay, and here, you remember probably, you remember this, this table. Uh, Mr. Mateo, do you remember this table? This table, Mr. Mateo, do you remember this table? What you, you, have, what you have here? Mr. Mendoza, <laughs> do you remember what you have here? Cosine, yes, cosine, what do you have here? Sine. Sine. Here? Minus sine. Minus sine. Minus sine. And here? Cosine. Yes. Sine. Yes. So big C is what you mean by cosine of theta. And big S is what we mean by sine of theta. In this way, we save some space. Okay. Now, since this is a, a fourth order problem, we need to worry about not only displacement, but also rotations. But, but since a rotation is perpendicular to the xy plane, the a rotation, okay, in the z direction will correspond in the two reference systems. Since these are plane analysis in the plane, that's what I mean, rotations, corresponds in both reference systems, okay? So when, uh, when we, right here, uh, What we mean by this is that is, if we write phi in the local, it corresponds to phi in the global, okay? So if you uh, consider that this uh, vector rotates, is the same in the black and in the, in the red uh, reference system, okay? Because this is uh, orthogonal to the plane. Okay, now, so what we can do is we can, we can combine all of this, okay? And generate a new transformation matrix, okay? Similarly, what we did in, in, in uh, chapter one. So now we can transform Since we are working with uh, elements, which has, we have uh, two joints, we need to transform the displacement or to express the external forces and moments in, in the two points. So we need, we can transform the two displacement of a beam element in this way, 
Okay? So when for every element, we can say that we need to transform d1x, d1y. These are local. But also, we are saying is that we need to take care of the rotation. And then we have to consider the displacement of the second joint. So these are the displacements of the two joints. This is for the first, this is for the second. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and apply it for both, since both joints uh, belong to the same local reference system, okay? So we don't need to change the, the third angle because it's the same element. I don't know what happened here. Anyway. So uh, to transform that, okay, let's uh, identify two parts here. I'm receiving a, a, a warning here. Let me save. So just in case there. Okay, uh, so this is uh, equal to this multiply by the same two vectors, but now these are in the global reference system. That means that we have no hats. This is for the first joint. This is for the second joint. I need a grid here in order to right in a more uh, horizontal way, but anyway. Now, here, we know that these two components can be transformed like that, right? And we know that this one here, phi1z, is exactly phi1z in the local. So we need a one here, if I need here, and the rest has to be zeros. So these three are converted to these three. And this part here, we don't need it, so we fill it with zero, similar with this. And in this area, we transform these components of the second displacement into the, this component in the local reference system. So we need to repeat that, cosine, sine, minus sine, cosine, this is one. And the rest is zero. So this, new matrix helps us to transform the displacement between the local and global reference system. But now considering that uh, we have uh, two degrees of freedom for every joint, displacement and also rotation, okay? So um, in a very uh, compact, way we can write this like this, okay? These are the displacements of the two joints of one element. This is a letter E element in the local reference system. We can uh, get it from the transformation matrix, which is this. In this case, you can see it's a six by six, by six matrix, and we multiply by the corresponding displacement of the element, but in the global reference system. That's why we don't, we don't need the hat here, okay? So that's, it's ext extremely similar. It's very similar as in the case of the, 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 the transformation that we applied in chapter one. But now comes 
very important step, okay? Chapter one, in chapter one, we worried only about bars. That means the very long element which supported uh, inline actions, okay? In this chapter, we have been working with uh, elements, long elements, beams, which support lateral load, okay? Okay, now we could in this chapter simply work with beams, okay, lateral loads, but I think it's more efficient if we combine the two effects. So the stiffness matrix that we are going to develop is a stiffness matrix which support uh, alignment loads, okay, tension compression, but also a, a, an element which supports lateral load, that's bending, okay? That's what we're going to do in the next, uh, step. Instead of deducing separate case for uh, bars and beams. So let's combine both effects. So what we're saying is that we're going to produce an stiffness matrix which considers alignment effects and also lateral effects. Okay, so we're gonna have something which produces uh, um, axial and lateral loads. Uh, Hennessy, there is somebody in the waiting room. Yeah. Okay. Now, so uh, on the left, I'm going to write for the bars. And here, this is for the beams, okay? In this case, I'm going to write in the local reference system, okay? So this is, for the bars, it's going to be EA over L. But now I'm going to do something very strange, if you can say, is that in the beginning, we considered only these two elements, right? But now I'm going to also include rotation. Now, since the bar doesn't sustain uh, or doesn't support any lateral load, any rotation moment, then this line has to be filled with zeros. Uh, this is D to X d to y and phi to z we have to be careful here with the with the rows and columns but this is to separate the two joints but now here i have to break it into three rows three rows and three rows there now i need three columns and three columns. So we have a six by six matrix, okay? So remember that uh, we had only EA over L, one minus one minus one, one. So the one was, was considering this, the, the effect in the axial direction. So this is one, the minus one was multiplied by D2X. So this is minus one. Then we have one here. I'm sorry, minus one here and one here. And the rest is going to be zero. So you recognize immediately that this is the very first stiffness matrix that we did use for the bar elements. Since this is a bar in the local reference system, everything else will be zeros. So we have to, let's put it with, with green to recognize that we are not adding any extra effect. 
I'm not going to do it, you do it at home, okay? Everything else is going to be zero. Now for the beams, it's going to be similar. So this is going to be E, I sub C, divided by L cubed, okay? Again, we separate this in a six by six matrix. That's four and that's six. And then we go, this is the central to separate the two joints. And here I have three columns, similarly for this one. And this is multiplied by D1X similarly, but in the local reference system, D1X, uh, D1Y, V1Z, all local. And then for the second uh, joint, there. Now, in the case of the beam, okay, there is no axial effect but we have lateral effect. So this value uh, is equal to 12. And then the rotation, yes, we need it. So this is 6L. This goes with the trans uh, axial, no effect. And this was minus 12 and this 6L. So that was the first row of the stiffness matrix that we did use previously. Let me go back to remind you what we did some sessions ago. This, okay, so this, this first row, this is um, what I'm talking about, okay? And these are multiplied by D1, Y, phi one Z, but no effect here has the axial because this is just pure beam effect, okay? The next one is going to be rotation, and then we jump because we go to the, for the second joint, we also have on the vertical and rotation. So we have to be careful when we form this matrix. Here. So next one is going to be, uh, uh, so it's going to be 6L, 4L squared. We leave this, we go to this one, minus 6L, and then 2L squared. Next line corresponds to the force in the X direction. Since this beam, it has to be filled with zeros. Then we jump to the next one, it's going to be minus 12, and we recognize that this is symmetric as it should be. Then we're going to jump to this one here, 12 and minus 6L. We complete the last line in a symmetric way. So this is equal to that. This is equal to that. This is equal to this. And the last one is 4L squared. On the right-hand side, both cases, we have to consider the external forces, but now we generalize, uh, we consider both axial and lateral loads. Okay, again, again, the rest have to be equal to zero. I don't have the time, so I'm just gonna put some of this zeros and all of that, you, you complete it at home. Now, what we can do now is to set, combine both effects, okay? So this is what we're going to do. And before we go to the next uh, step break, uh, we can now combine both effects. 
So we can say is that uh, the external force, external forces, this is six by six by one. So you have forces in the X, Y, and moment, forces in the X, Y, and moment for, the, for both uh, joints. Then we have this matrix here. So this is K local, but this is for the bar. So this is this matrix here. Then we have to combine it with this other. This is for the lateral effects. Let, let me set off, by the way, I can say it's a beam. And then this is a six by six matrix. And we multiply by the displacements of both joints in the local reference system. And this is again, this is a vector. So this is six by one. I'm, go, I'm not going to write it, but uh, you can imagine immediately see that, uh, for example, here I have a zero, uh, but I, in, this, in this position, I'm going to have EA over L times one. So here I'm gonna have this, this value in here. And here also I'm going to have this minus one, here minus one and one. So this combination, we have to be careful because if we consider lateral effects, we have to worry about inertia. If we are, are interested in axial effects, we have to consider A, that's the, the axial stress, axial uh, of axial, the area, I'm sorry, the area of the, of this section. Okay. Okay, look, let's take a break. And at the end, we we can go on with the 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 rest of the procedure, and then uh, we can explain uh, an, an example, which is in the PDF file that I, I shared with you last session. Let's take it <clears throat> a second break here. <clears throat> 